Mercer with How She Quits, and I am super excited to be with Victoria Gaisley today. And in this interview, we like to talk about women who have successfully exited their corporate career and now run their own businesses from home. Um, Because I know when I was going through that season, it was super inspiring to hear these stories and to just know that I'm not the only one there. And most of all, I just want to know, like, how did she do it? Like, how did she do it? So Victoria, welcome. And why don't you, why don't you tell us, like, what do you do now and, and a little bit of your journey? Thank you for having me. This is very exciting. So uh, my journey, the well, it's <laughs> big questions. I'll try and condense it down. So I spent most of my um, career prior to doing this in corporate communications. I started out doing editing and that sort of thing and then ended up um, at municipal government of all things doing uh, communications for a specific agency. So I did that for probably, what was it, 10, 12 years? And somewhere in there, I always had um, an inkling that I wanted to work for myself. And I also had a really big drive to get out of the city. So I put those two things together. And um, a number of years, and we'll get into this later, a number of years of preparing, et cetera, we moved in 2008 from Vancouver to um, the Sunshine Coast, which is just a little bit west of Vancouver, Canada. And, um, and I commuted back and forth for full time for two years. Wow. And then part time for, uh, I guess it was another year. So basically it's a ferry ride. It's like a 40 minute ferry ride and then another 45 minutes on the bus it was, right? So it was, it was a long day. You know, you'd have to be on the first ferry in the morning and then not home till 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. So I was happy to stop doing that <laughs> in 2011. It was November 2011 that I walked away from the the lesser part-time work that I had sort of stepped back into from my full-time work. And um, and I've been doing that if this uh, work, web development ever since. Awesome. That's the short, that's the short story. <laughs> well, and you already sparked like a zillion questions for me because I know that stepping back to part-time for a while was a great way for me to sort of build my business and exit corporate and do so gracefully. And so like, Uh, let's just dive into that question while it's here. Um, How did, you know, asking for it is scary. Not everybody's open to that. How did that go for you? So I was super fortunate in that I had a um, immediate supervisor manager who I'd known for quite a long time. And he sort of was aware that at some point I was (laughs) going to be leaving, you know? So it was one of those situations. It didn't come out of the blue, but for him, for by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I was in a management position, so it was definitely a lot of, of discussion and work around succession and, and all of that. And there wasn't anyone in our immediate um, group, so to speak, that was going to step into that. So it was a big, it was a big procedure. Um, but it was kind of scary, for sure. Um, and I hummed and hawed about it probably for, I don't know, two, three years, I, I would think, before I finally, you know, I, I have to do this. You know, you have that drive to to do what we're doing, <laughs> or, you know, your life has to be different, all of those things. Um, and finally, I just had to, I just had to do it. And he was fantastic. So we just, like I said, it took two years of me commuting. And, uh, but the long-term plan was that, that I was going to go to part-time at some point and then step away. So it, um, he was really amenable to it and it worked out really well. If he hadn't been, yeah, it would have, would have been a bit of a different story, I'm sure. But yeah, yeah. But no, I think that's really a good, um, a good sign for everybody who's, you know, sitting in your corporate job right now and wanting to take a step like this, having a good relationship with your boss. Like to me, like I loved the people I worked with and my team and and my manager, but they all knew like four kids, like it just wasn't working. Like I needed to, to get out of such a heavy travel position for one. So if you just have that situation, I think the right thing to do totally is to keep that line of communication open. And then you don't leave them hanging either, right? You're sort of grooming your replacement and preparing the team and it's a really nice transition so that's super ideal that you were able to have that too I love those stories they're so positive (laughs) yeah and it was it was I I can't imagine having done it any other way Um, it would have been stressful and we're going to talk about this I'm sure to just have gone cold turkey and yeah yeah (laughs) oh yeah well cold turkey I mean some people are forced to do that right and I think um I my husband tells the story in our marriage weekends that we do together about burning the boats. Like why do the Vikings like 
roll up to the island and burn the boats because there's no going back, right? And he uses that for marriage, like just burn the boats, guys, there's no plan B. But, you know, some people are thrust in that position with their jobs. And I think some of us who aren't thrust into that position, maybe we're not working as hard as we need to be because we still got a boat. We still got a lifeboat, right? That's a whole other discussion, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so what was the one thing that finally like compelled you to quit? Like you're a mom. So maybe talk a little bit about that part of your story. For sure. So um, my son was born in 2003 and while I was in that job, that same position and um up here, we have a year of maternity leave that's covered. I so, love that. I love that. You're so lucky. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's incredibly, yeah. So during that whole year, I was, okay, I got to get this business thing started. Because I really, I, as much as, like you say, I love the people I worked with and the work I was doing, it felt fulfilling. And, but I really didn't want to go back. I thought, I have a child. I'm not, I don't want to do that whole thing. So I spent that year working my butt off. <laughs> learning, doing all sorts of courses and spending stupid amounts of money, um, trying to get up to speed and what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? So originally I was going to do a, an online a website that would give me residual income and, and there was just no way in a year that, that I was able to pull that off. So back to work I went. Um, but that was the impetus of it was to, to be home with him. Mm -hmm. And that drove it right through the next five years till we actually did move. So, okay. So you just said a couple others. See, there's so many great nuggets here that everybody's <laughs> wanting. All of us chase things that were not right. Like, I don't know how many iterations of things I chased before I finally found like, what was that sustainable business that matched my gifts that there's a need for that was going to keep me home. Um, so a lot of women come to me and say, I want to start a blog. I want to make money blogging. And I know you, you have a blog in that space as well. Um, or they think, I just want to set this up and then it's going to bring me money, right? The whole passive residual income thing. And you and I both know, because we've been in the trenches now for, well, I mean, since we're both kind of computer girls, I've had it, my own URL since 1997, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not quite, but just about, yeah. <laughs> um, so it, it, it seems to be that easy, but it doesn't come that easy. And there, every course out there is trying to tell you it's that easy. So what is your message to ladies that are kind of seeing that and hearing that? And, you know, I know there are successes out there like that, but, you know, it's not the fastest route, like you said. So I'm just gonna let you jabber on about that for a while. <laughs> Perfect. So that, I mean, that, that, that wraps up my story to a T, right? I kind of fell into that. Uh, what's the word, you know, miracle story and the lot of return for very little investment story. And, and then it turns out to be the complete opposite. So that was originally my idea. So I started a blog called, um, actually I didn't start that till a little bit later, but my, my grand vision was this modern homesteading blog. So that was the preliminary work that I was doing while I was before I actually went to, to full time. So I did that, never made a penny, of course, right? But I spent thousands of dollars. Like, Can I show that? Do you mind if I show that blog? Because I think it's a great example. I mean, you can't, yeah, it's a little embarrassing in that I've been so busy with my business that I haven't done much with that, but it's got fantastic traffic. So my goal in the next few months is to actually get back to writing. It's actually modernhopesending.ca. Oh. It's .ca. <laughs> How about that? The dot com was like $7,000. So I wasn't going there. No, no. So what you said is so telling because when I met you, like this was the first website I came across, not your cabin design studio. Right. And I was like, look at this girl, she's doing it. Like my perception was that, you know, you were totally doing it. You were making money blogging and oh, I could do it too. Right. Like, because Anybody that's out there has this perception. If there are bloggers that make money. I don't want to say that that's not a possibility, but, um, but it takes time and it takes a lot of effort, right? It's a lot of work to get the audience to a point built up and the traffic built up to a point where that would be. So now this is, even though I haven't written a new article in, I won't even tell you how long, um, the traffic is still fantastic. I still get emails from people saying, oh, this article, you know, that I wrote four years ago. So it's, it's, it's in my plan this year is to actually take this and, and ramp it up again. Nice. But it was a lot of work to get there, you know, yeah. on top of my business work, the writing, the planning, the dealing with 
um, magazine article editors and yeah, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of fun, I have to say. Yeah. Um, so originally when I just really quickly, originally when, when I came, we moved here and I was still working part time, et cetera. My goal was to take this, what we're looking at now and make that my income, right? Do the writing, do products, do all of those things. And then at some point I decided that I was, it would be so much easier just to do what I already knew how to do, <laughs> which yeah. was the, the tech web design graphic stuff, which I also love. So I balanced those two things for um, three, four years. And then last year I didn't write on the homesteading thing at all. Although I do keep up the Facebook group fairly well. Um, but I've been devoting all my time to actually paying off all the debt from all the stuff I did before to try and learn what I was doing. <clears throat> well, and I mean, your story is like so many people's and like, I don't want there to be any shame or guilt in it because like I'm the same way. Right. So I, I built a big blog at about the same time. Like when I was, you know, met you, I think it's been four or five years. It feels like at least that since we first connected. It would have been 2011, was it? 10, 11? Yeah. Like, it might have started around, yeah, that sounds about right. That might have sound, sounds right. Um, and yeah, so I was in the same space, right? I was spending a lot of money on a lot of courses, a lot of coaches, consultants. And at the end of the day, um, it's not that you have a bad niche, right? You have a lot of traffic and you have, you know, great, this is a great topic. And by the way, guys, she is a modern homesteader. Like she's living it. Like you can see the little background, the cabin she lives in and, um, you know, Oh, not me. I'm in the suburbs. You can tell by <laughs> I cannot grow a garden to save my life, but it's very much you. But you know, my blog firefighterwife.com is me. Like it is our life. I'm married to a firefighter. It's our family. And there was, there's a ton of traffic and there are people that email me all the time, but monetizing that is where it gets tricky. Um, yes. So, I mean, there are ways to monetize it, right? But I mean, what's easier, like you said, is to to kind of turn to a, oh, well, there's also this service need in the tech space and wow, people are paying 50, 80, hundred dollars an hour for this kind of work. And why would I not use my talents there? Um, Cause I don't Which hate it. If you already have those talents, it just made sense. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. All right. So our message to the ladies out there is, Hey, I understand your heart might be in a blog, but think about that working part-time corporate, building up your services business and running a blog and your mom, like it's, that's a lot on your plate. That's a lot on your plate. So. Yes. And something has to go at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes too often it's like our own self-care. I know that that, well, that is like what comes last for me. <laughs> given, yes. Unfortunately. Yeah. Oh goodness. Okay. So but there are probably, there were courses, there were epiphanies that you had where you were like, no, this is not going to be the way, but now I've had this epiphany and cabin design studio and here's, here's how I'm going to, you know, set my prices and find my clients. Like, do you have an epiphany moment like that to share with us? Well, what I always say when people ask that question, you know, what do you do? And I, because that's the first thing anyone asks you. And, uh, and I say, I work for myself and everyone's always, really, what do you do? Well, it's not, you know, all that exciting. I mean, it's great. And, and I love it. And I'm, I feel very privileged that I get to do that. Um, but, oh, hold on. I totally lost my train of thought. See, I went off. And <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about all the zillions of things I wanted to say. And then I, I totally lost my train of thought. Sorry. What was the question? Um, I was saying, um, what was that epiphany moment? Oh. Right. When you were like, oh, this blog's not going to make it, but hey, this consulting work really makes sense. Right. I had too many epiphanies going on. That was the problem. Um, it was having a, that was, that was what I was going to say. What I always say is connecting with, in order to make this work, connecting with a, um, a network. And for me, it was connecting with a business coach, which is how you and I met. Yeah. Um, that just completely blew my world sort of wide open with regard to the people that I had contact to and I was able to to connect with yeah. amazing people. I mean, I'm still working with, wow, eight or 10, maybe 12 people that I met way back then. So that was huge. That that connection was, was um, massive. Connecting with someone who had a large network, whose network was growing. 
and and then to answer actually answer your question because <laughs> I realized that was kind of an aside. Um, the epiphany was that I was batting my head against a wall trying to do too many things, mm -hmm. right? And I would I'd be working at ten eleven o'clock at night and and it just didn't make any sense to me. So I thought I have this network now. I have some talents. I have things that I can offer. And, and it just seemed like a no brainer at that point to, to stop trying to do both, at least at the same time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And you can still keep your, your blog passion. Like you said, you've got a project this year that, you know, you can go back and be intentional about when you're going to focus on it. But well, now that I've gotten to a point where I have some processes and uh, with regard to the design work and a little more structure than I had previously, because as you're building these things, the structure is kind of lacking, or at least it was for me, I'll speak for myself. Um, again, trying to do everything at once, trying to learn everything, that whole sparkly item syndrome that we get. Um, oh, that software looks good. Oh, that software looks fantastic. So, and then you never really become proficient at any of it, right? So what I've done the last couple of years is really focus on specific services. Um, even though I can do a wide range of things, it made sense to really hone down because otherwise you, yeah, it's just distracting. Yeah, totally. So this, the formula is pretty simple. I mean, Vic Victoria and I have similar formula, formula to how we exited the corporate. You know, you get one client, you get two clients, you get three clients, you, you get five clients and you're like, I think that's the number. Five clients was my magic number. And now, you know, that's what I'm doing entirely. Um, when you're right, with, to grow then from five to 10, now you start needing systems and whatnot. But the beauty of that is that then you don't have your corporate job anymore. Now you're, you're designing your own systems and it's, it's fun. It's good. Um, yes. So I really like that formula. And the other key thing you said was getting into the right network. So I think often when we're sitting in our corporate job, um, everybody in your corporate job around you, like in your managers, their goal is to make you happy in that job and to keep you like focused on that work. And it's not bad. It's just like, that's, that's their job. Like they're paying you as an employee. You have an obligation to do well for them. They're going to make you do well in that environment. And we forget to put our heads up and go, my services could be used in a lot of other different places. And right. And I would say even now more than, five to 10 years ago when you were starting this journey, even now it's easier to find those networks and those places and those people that need um, services like this. What, you know, the web design, the logo design, graphics, branding, um, those kinds of skills. Um, you know, there's flex jobs and hire my mom and Upwork and e well, Elance and Upwork are the same thing now, right? <laughs> um, there's lots and lots of places and getting connected into business communities where, um, where people do need these professional services. So. I think your story is just, it's, it's simple. Like you designed your life, but it was messy getting there. Like <laughs> all of us. Yeah. A lot of trial and error. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and so having someone to sort of help you guide, not, not necessarily guide you, but just what are the pitfalls, what not to fall into, you know, would have been huge. And I didn't know anyone who had done what I'm doing personally. So I didn't have that sort of mentor relationship or anyone who knew which software was better. I mean, I just spent hundreds, thousands of hours researching and playing. And, um, and I just realized something really funny. My, my image there says Jonah. So I apologize for that. I figured it was your son's name. <laughs> <laughs> he, does, he does online school and he was obviously logged in doing his stuff. <laughs> that's okay. I we, we all figure that out. That's yeah. this is the mom life, right? Like that's what happens. <laughs> Truly. Goodness. So what do you um so yeah, to have a guide through those pitfalls and like I remember the feeling of I just want to ask somebody, like, is this gonna work? Is this the right thing? And I I could I could find somebody who like knew Instagram and they could tell me about Instagram, but is Instagram right for my business? Right. Or you know, you find somebody that knows how to do, like, I'll just, you know, cause I was doing this five years ago. So the, the, the tools are all different. You might, you're going to find a ton of people he says telling you, you got to do Facebook live. Here's how you do Facebook live. Here's the best way to do it. But you know, it might not be right for your business model. Absolutely. And so to find somebody to help you go, Hey, here's how to design a work from home business with professional services that are skills that you have from the workplace 
um, you know, how do you price yourself? How do you structure your day? How do you, what does your website need to look like? Because it probably doesn't need to look like, I mean, Victoria, you design websites. So yours is gorgeous and amazing and has, you know, all kinds of bells and whistles. But I will tell you, my website, my Lori Mercer CTO website is so, first of all, I need new headshot pictures because my hair has grown a lot. Um, <laughs> but it's so basic and I don't spend a ton of time blogging because... I have connected into a network where my business comes through referrals. So, you know, my website can stay pretty reasonable. Um, I'll jump in there. Sorry, my website is in desperate need of, of its own revamping. So I'm working on that because I've, what ends up happening, though, is I haven't had to, what you just said. It hasn't been a priority because I just have people being referred. And, and I know that I shouldn't really, you know. Anyways, it's on the list of things to do now. But but your point is really well taken in that at some point it it kind of becomes just a calling card. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so for women who are thinking about this, like, and so all the professional skills I like to throw out there that I think are really viable for work from home freelance kind of work, you know, it it's of course the web design, graphic design, um, technology spaces, technical writing, copywriting, um, I think accounting, I even think like HR, project management kind of services, like all of those I think are very viable careers that you can do freelance from home. And for all of them, minus maybe the graphic designer and copywriter, I think you can have a very basic website and you don't have to be spending hours and hours and hours on social media. Um, you need to be spending time connecting on social media, but you don't need to be spending time pushing content 10 times a day, creating all that content. You know, it's a very different business model than like what you needed to do to build modern homesteading. You had to push a lot of content. You had to write a lot, do a lot of graphics. Absolutely. Uh, for, I mean, for me with the, the design piece, it's all been referrals. I've never done an ad. I've never done, I don't even blog on that space outside of just some things. I'm going to start again now, just because I think there's numerous things I'm seeing in that clients are doing <laughs> that I think it would be helpful to, to do some articles and just say, here, go do this. Exactly. Um, but yeah. Well, and that's what I, I tend to do also. Um, so, you know, Victoria, we didn't say this part yet. This is obvious. Victoria and I work together and she has been my web developer since we met, um, starting with all the firefighter wife stuff. And now she does together. We do work, um, like for my clients, she does, she's my WordPress guru behind all of my client sites. And um, it's, it's very, I forget where I was going with that because I forgot to introduce. Look, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we work, we do work together and I will like, I'll find I get the same questions a lot and it's from maybe from prospects, not from clients. And then I'll like put a resource out on my website and say, Oh, like, this is why we have the, how do you, um, how do you select the right email tool choice? Because I get that all the time. Should I be on MailChimp? Should I be on Entreport? You know, what, what do you think? So, so I made a tool in there. It's answered with all the questions. So absolutely. But it's very freeing to know that you don't have to like what you, have, <clears throat> excuse me, what you have to do first is get your first client. And well, yeah. And if you do a great job, it's sort of, I have found, and I've been super fortunate and that it has just kind of taken care of itself yeah right if yeah. you do good work and have that integrity and pride in in what you're doing and and don't rip people off um, it just comes that's right yeah and I will I'll say out loud if you're if somebody here is thinking about a job opportunity like what do they want to do when they leave I think that the WordPress development space is while it might feel like there's a ton of WordPress developers out there I will tell you there are not a ton of quality WordPress developers um experiences that that I have had personally and that even my clients have had you know WordPress developers that kind of fall off the face of the earth like they design your site and then they're gone and they don't return messages and they don't return phone calls and and your site's down and you're stuck because they were the guru um I have had some absolute horror stories told to me it's frightening yeah yeah, well, and, and so when I have that happen, Victoria's the one that always digs me out. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've got this new client and guess what? Their website is a mess and they need something urgently. Yeah. And so I really think it comes, it comes down to just being responsive, setting expectations, being open and clear in communication. And to be quite honest, a lot of techie people probably aren't very good at those skills. I don't think that they're bad people. I think that they no. just 
undervalue communication. So that is a wide open space. Victoria will welcome you into her space because we want to see more good people like her. Absolutely. I get a lot of requests um, from new clients, particularly for VAs. For virtual assistants, someone who's good, and I don't have anyone that I can recommend. So, yeah, I think VA is also great work, and and I did interview another VA as well, um, who's also my VA, who just quit like a couple weeks ago. So we got a very good like just quit corporate story, um, and I think it's the same thing that um, there's a whole lot of detail work. Like if I'm the expert in my area, say that I wasn't, you know, say you weren't techie and you had modern home study, and you would want somebody to be able to format your blog posts for you just to make them, you know, you can write, but to make them look oh. pretty and get that graphic up there. And Absolutely. And, and the WordPress as much as, and I'm just going to say this because I think it's important for people to realize as easy as WordPress can be um, to do anything sort of extra with it. It really helps to have somebody that you can just fire an email to and go, how do I do this? Or can you do this? And it'll take you five minutes where it would take me seven hours to figure it out. Exactly. So where is your time best spent, really? I totally, I totally agree. And I mean, you know, because I know WordPress and I can do this stuff for the longest time, I was just doing this work myself until I finally was like, no, I really need to hand everything over to Victoria because my time is more valuable in front of my audience, maybe working on branding, maybe writing something. And, um, yeah, so then you get into a long-term relationship like we've had, you know, years now. Absolutely. Yeah, because I'm not, I don't want to be in front of the camera. You know, that's not my, where my, my um, gifts are. So to have people around you using their gifts to support your gifts, I think is pretty brilliant. It is, and you're doing great in front of the camera today, and thank you for agreeing okay. to do it. <laughs> So, I used to do a lot of camera work actually in my in my old job, love videos and instructional things, and and uh, but I haven't for years, so it's kind of delving back in. Good, you should, you should, you're doing good. So how so where did you find your first couple of clients, and like kind of how long was it before you kind of had your first dollar? So I was fortunate in that I had kind of been doing. Um, website work off the side of my, not literally off the side of my desk. I didn't do it while I was at work, but, um, but my boss was part of um, an organization, an industry organization at that point where he asked me to do their website as actually as part of my job. Right. So when I left that position in 2011, um, that sort of followed me that piece because I'd been doing it for, I don't know, 10 years or something crazy. So, so that was technically my first, client. And then, um, and there was quite a bit of work, I think that first year. So that kind of helped bridge the, they had a couple conferences or something that happened and we needed to do some sites for that. And then um, connecting with that business coach, like I talked about earlier, was huge. So that happened, that was about 2011, I guess, when I started getting serious about, about that end of things. Um, and that first year, I probably it was a few, it was probably four or five, six people. And then it just sort of exploded from, from there. And there's, you know, there's some people that needed one thing done and you never saw them again. And then there's, like I said, that large group that I, I'm still working with at this point. Yeah. Six, six years later. That's perfect. Yeah. And you sort of learn, like, is your, like, another thing I think that holds people back is like, well, I don't know what to charge. or I don't know what my services would be. I mean, I think at the beginning, you sort of say yes to everything. And then yes. you realize like, Oh, I shouldn't have said yes to that. I'm never going to say yes to that again. <laughs> you know, you sort of learn as you go. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you find your groove and, um, no, I think, I think you're in a very good place with that. So Absolutely. yeah, there was, um, what do you wish someone would have told you while you were in this stage of like building up your business and exiting corporate? Much of what we've just talked about, which is don't try and do everything, you know, focus, 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 because I didn't focus as I think you said for yourself as well. And you try to learn everything just because I have that sort of brain where I like to learn everything, but it wasn't very productive. And I spent a lot of time learning things that I would never, ever recommend to anyone. Um, but I guess going through that process was helpful too, because then I have that perspective now that I can offer, which I wouldn't have otherwise. But if I was not someone who wanted to be a techie person, um, to have had someone who could have said, oh, don't even go there, it would have saved a lot of time and thousands of dollars. Yeah. So, 
that would have been helpful. <laughs> totally makes sense. Like I always wanted to, I just wanted to put my business plan in front of somebody and say, is this like, is this really going to make money? Is this sustainable? And they, let me, let's just get this clear. There's no person out there that will tell you that, but there are people who can, because it's an impossible question, Absolutely. but there are people who can help you ask the right questions for you to go prove it yourself, right? So yeah. like, for example, a question that I had last year in my business is, do I specialize in Entreport or do I stay open to Infusionsoft, Active Campaign, Entreport, ClickFunnels, you know, all of the various, um, for those of you who don't know what those are, that's just a alphabet soup of email marketing <laughs> solutions, right? Um, and, you know, nobody can answer that because they're all speculating the same things in the market. But what they can do is guide me and say, are there, do you have a steady referral of clients only on Entreport? And do you have a place to go and get them? And if you do, then yeah, specializing in Entreport probably makes sense. But if you don't, then where are you going to find the other clients for the other tools? And is there enough hours in the day to learn all the tools? And if you have a VA help you, do they know all the tools, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that it's, it's a series of questions that you need somebody to kind of guide you through about your business and they're strategic questions. They're not questions like, should you be on Facebook or not? Right. It's more strategic. Like, no, absolutely. Because I mean, there's, there's pieces that you just don't resonate with you, me. I'll, I'll speak for myself at all at that to various points along the way and at some point I thought what am I this is not fun you know <laughs> and there, we always have to do things that are not fun as part of our business but at some point I did a project um last year it was a fantastic project but I realized after doing it that I would never ever do a project like that again it wasn't a web development thing it was an actual printed um project and yeah it was just crazy midnight seven in the morning meetings and I just it just did not fit with what I want my life to look like so it was great at the time but I will never do another one <laughs> or, so no. that's perfect because I do think that as you're designing your own businesses or even maybe you've left corporate and you're like oh this isn't what I thought it would be really thinking about um what clients are going to work with my lifestyle, right? So I have a couple clients right now who are West Coast. I'm East Coast, West Coast. And it sort of works out good for me in Victoria because I can sort of dump things at the end of my day and she's still got like four hours left in her day, <laughs> you know, to address them. Um, but I have a couple clients on the West Coast who, you know, want to have phone calls at 6 p.m. Eastern. And that is just crazy town at my house. Like 6 p.m. Eastern is crazy town, but it's only 3 p.m. for them. So... I've, I've thought about that. Like I've just had to be very clear with the expectations with them and say, you know, these are the hours that you can contact me and these are the hours I'm probably not going to respond. And we came to an agreement and they're all good with it because they want my services. But I think, you know, you need to watch for those indicators. Is, is this client needy? Like, do they want to text you three times a day? And it becomes, it takes a while to get to the point where you can recognize that right off the bat, right? Yes. Um, now I'm to the point where I can see it pretty quickly. And thankfully uh, there's rarely do I run across that, but, um, at the beginning, not so much. Yeah. Because we're very hungry for clients and work and it's okay because you're building your portfolio, but just, just realize those are some of the rocky, rocky places. I think you have to get through to, to get here. Yes. Oh goodness. Okay. So let's see. Um, what, what question have we left out that you would like to talk about? I don't, I don't know. Um, I could say I could go on for hours. <laughs> um, I, I think the key, if, if I think back prior to me actually stepping away um, and the fears, that was, that was something that I'm sure a lot of people have, I would guess. Um, that fear of stepping away from steady income. People thought I would, my parents thought I was completely bonkers. Mine too. My dad was in the same job for 30 years and retired. And, you know, that, that, that generation that did that, um, they thought I was completely nuts. Like you have a great job and benefits and, you know, six weeks of holidays a year and all these things. Why? They just didn't get it. Didn't understand. Um, and at some points <laughs> along the way, I've wondered if I was crazy too, but, but now six years in, I can't imagine any other 
way of working, to be honest. Yeah, I, I agree. And the whole burn the boats thing, I mean, I feel like the very last thing I would do, like if I had to put food on the table for my family, I would go back to a job, right? But it's like the last, last, last option. And um, that poll really to just be home, you talked about it, that was what drove you home, you know, to work from home, um, that poll to just be there. I know you homeschool, right? So it's, yeah. Uh, so even more so you have a very close connection. I mean, it allows you to homeschool. Um, for me, I work nine to three because the last school bus picks up in the morning at 8.45 and the first kids come home from school at 3 p.m. And so nine to three is my time. And um, summers are lower key because there's a lot of buzz going on around. Um, and it's really that, that blessing of being able to do this from home that I think is, is a really big driver for so many. And, but you do have days you doubt. It's, it's okay, that's normal. Absolutely. And I think that's really, really important to, I, I, yeah, I'm thinking of people I know who have kind of gone there and then gone back because they hit those points where it got tough and they were working till midnight and all of those things until you get to that point. And, um, and I, I guess something you just said really struck me and that, that was that going back to a corporate job was kind of the last thing on the list. Once you've done it for a while, and I'll, I mean, again, I'll speak for myself, but I think you probably feel the same. Once you've done this for a while, all these opportunities and options and possibilities open up in your brain that weren't really there before. Yeah. Like, I could do this. I could do that. If this doesn't work, that, you know, once you have those skills, you can take them and apply them to all sorts of different topics, niches, skill sets. Yeah, because yeah. doing this is a skill set in itself. I find. It is. It is. It's I guess it's why we're here talking about it, right? Yeah. And, and giving good advice to those who are thinking about it. So maybe the last thing, it just struck me as, as we were talking that I want to close on. Um, the comparison game is so rough um, in the online entrepreneurial world these days. And I mean, I said it earlier when I was like, I loved your homesteading website. I thought you were killing it. I'm like, look at her. She's killing it. <laughs> I want to be that. But right. The perception is not reality so much in the online space. And one of the things I've been wrestling with um, is my branding with how she quits because I am not going to be the glam girl that throws glitter around on a white backdrop and says, you can do it. Like <laughs> those girls, there are some very smart ladies that are doing that. No, yeah. respect, but it's just not me. Yeah. And I am really trying in this interview series to reach um, women who are, 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 are like, one time somebody called me a regular person and I was like, oh. at first I'm like, you're like, you're so regular. And then I was like offended, but then like they meant it in a good way. Like I'm regular and people can connect with me. Right. Relatable. Absolutely. Yeah. Like regular maybe was not the word I would hope that they would use, but. <laughs> um, but most of us are not glitter girls. Yeah. I, I'm sure not. I have occasions. I'll let you finish your point. And then I just have one last little funny point. Well, you, I mean, you and I are similar in a, in a lot of the people I'm interviewing and, and the women that are coming to How She Quits and talking about this are, are similar. Like, um, I'm not all fancy in makeup. I dress real plain and simple, but you know what? We're smart girls and we know how to get things done and we have value to add and we need to get beyond the, the glitter and glam branding and really talk about, did you invoice? Tomorrow's my invoicing day. I always invoice on the first. How much did you invoice? because that is changing your life, that's changing your family's life, and um, you can do great, great things without being all glam in front of the camera. So I don't want that to hold anybody back. Me and Victoria are, are in our nerdy, plain, regular selves are being <laughs> brave. I actually had to put makeup on today. I was, I thought, actually, I was, as I was doing that, it was funny. I thought, God, I used to spend so much time doing the hair and the makeup, and now I only have to do it when I do this sort of thing, so, or have meetings, yeah. but yeah. That's totally right. That's totally right. And, you know, and for your definition and my definition of makeup is very minimalist already. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So I just wanted to shout out that to people that, you know, don't, don't let appearances make you feel like, Oh, I can't do what she's doing. I mean, it literally doesn't matter what's shown it. It is. You got one client, you're doing good work from them. They're paying you, you get another. That's how this game works. It's very basic. 
Absolutely. And, and to be yourself. And I, and I just, as we close, I just wanted to say something that's kind of funny, actually. So we live with chickens and on a road that has logging trucks going by all the time. And, and, you know, there's times when client, new clients want to meet with you on a Zoom or a Skype or something. And, and I just have to be real because I occasionally have to get up. We had a cougar here come and take our chickens um, last spring. And, you know, you're in the middle of a call with a client and suddenly all, you know, what is breaking loose in your yard and you have to just, sorry, <laughs> I got a moment. <laughs> it's a freaking out. There's a cougar in the yard. Got to go take care of it. So um, again, it's that balance, right? But being yourself, I think is, is really critical yeah. around expectations and, and your branding and who you become. And, and um, it's just a real gift to be able to pull all those things together. It is absolutely. That, that is a super, super good point. I mean, authenticity. And I think you operate your best when like you're in a space that feels like you, that's comfortable to you. And, um, you know, for me, my office looks like this. I love my office and other people, it would be like, oh, how do you work there? And, you know, for you, it's, it's in your cabin. And that is a great, great point to end on. I'm so glad you shared that. Yeah, thank you. I just thought it was, I, I'm thinking of all those moments when those sorts of things have happened. And yeah, if I had worked with people who were sort of much more formal, it maybe wouldn't have worked so well. Yeah, exactly. Well, I feel like I have the dream life. I think you feel the same way. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's amazing. And, you know, it doesn't, it, I'm, I'm not a millionaire, but I'm making exactly what I need to keep our family life running. And it is a huge, huge blessing. So yeah, that it is. That it is. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. And so one thing I did not share yet is the how she quits. I mean, it's up here on the screen, but um, if you want to do what Victoria and I have done, uh, howshequits.com, I have a free guide, three steps. The three steps are super easy. Like literally download this and black out your lunch hour and put in your headphones and go work on it because um, the answer is there. And I'm super excited about building up this How She Quits um, program. It's been on my heart for a long time because I know how alone I felt in that journey. And now it's time, right? I feel like I've made it. All these other women in my life have made it and we have stories to share. And we want to, uh, we want to bring moms home to work that they love and to their babies. So, oh, so she... important. Awesome. Well, thank you, Victoria. And um, yeah. You better go check your chickens or something, I guess. <laughs> right? I think, I think we're good today. I think we're good. I thought I heard a, a little rooster crow occasionally there. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. He was doing his thing there before. Yeah, we're good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. And I think we'll have many things to talk about in future, in future shows. Absolutely. I'm excited for you. Yeah, thank you. All right, spread the word. <laughs> I will.